look, Elias Patterson's an incredible player. He's a Vancouver Canuck. Uh, be excited about that. He's a really good defensive player, a really good two-way player. He's just not one of the three best defensive players in the National Hockey League this season. So there is no snub. Let's get that out of the way right here, right now. Bergeron, as you said, 12th straight finalist for this award. Unbelievable. He's won it five times. Uh, this may be the final time for him. He's the prohibitive favorite. And it's not just sentimentality either. Patrice Bergeron won 61% of his face-offs this year. He was on the ice for 27 even strength goals against all season. All season, 27 even strength goals against. Led the Bruins with an individual Corsi of 59.7%. And oh yeah, was a huge part of the Bruins having the best penalty kill in the National Hockey League. Penalty kill is going to be a theme through uh, this little segment here. Yeah. Nico Heischer, and I thought this was wild in the uh, NHL press release yesterday. He'd be the first ever number one overall draft pick to ever win the Selkie. Like you think, I mean, we're talking about the best player in each draft class. Like I would have thought that somewhere along the line, you know, a two-way bandit would have been uh, in the mix there. But no, apparently no, I guess first overall is like all offense and <laughs> maybe not enough defense, <laughs> uh, whatever the case. So there's that. Again, I'm not expecting that Heischer is going to win. But if you're wondering why Nico Heischer, and he was the first overall pick in in Pedersen's draft class. So these guys are like peers on a lot of levels. Yeah. Um, he set devil franchise records for face-offs taken and face-offs won. He led all Devils forwards in shorthanded ice time. New Jersey had the fourth best penalty kill in the National Hockey League. He led his team with 64 takeaways. And when uh, at even strength or five on five, the Devils outscored opponents 61-39. So uh, basically controlled 61%. I mean, that adds up to 100. 61% of the even strength goals scored uh, were by the Devils when he sure was out there on the ice. So... Uh, that gives you a pretty good sense that uh, spending a lot more time in the offensive zone and getting it done uh, offensively. And then you come to Mitch Marner, who's a winger, not a center. And that's a little bit unconventional for the Selkie. But yeah. again, Marner's uh, secret sauce this season led the league in takeaways with 104. Just the seventh forward since the NHL started tracking takeaways to crest the 100 takeaway mark. So doing things that not many other guys have done over the course of of their careers, 13th among all NHL forwards in shorthanded ice time. And the least penalty kill was fourth in the National Hockey League. So the Bruins were one, the Devils were three, the Leafs were four, the Canucks, where were they, remind me? Way down the list, yeah, J-Pat. Exactly. <laughs> Just keep scrolling. You'll find Right, so the Canucks don't make the playoffs and their penalty kill is yeah. dead last in the NHL. Now, it's not all on Elias Pettersson, but certainly guilty by association. And I just don't think voters are going to be able to overlook that. And clearly they didn't because the finalists are out here. So, yeah, the piece that I wrote at thehockeynews.com was, all right, well, where does Elias Pettersson stack up then if he's not a finalist? And we won't know until the awards show in Nashville the week of the draft in June. Uh, the professional hockey writers will release all of the votes and we'll get a sense. Like Pettersson may have been fourth for all we know. We just don't know at this point. He may have been 10. He may not be anywhere, but, you know, the top three vote getters are your finalists. So that much we know for sure. Now, Elias Pettersson, maybe the biggest knock on him and an area that he is, if he's going to take on matchups, if he's going to be a true number one, is the faceoff circle, 44.3% on the draw. Yeah. Just like think of how many matchup faceoffs Bo Horvat took until he was traded, right? Like that was Bo's domain. Uh, Pedersen was an afterthought when it came to guys taking key faceoffs. So that's certainly an area. Now, he didn't even lead the Canucks in takeaways this year. Where Marner led the league, uh, Elias Pedersen was tied for second on the team. He had 56 takeaways. So, you know, he backjacks, he hounds guys, but ultimately, does he pick their pocket? I suppose not to the level that Mitch Marner was able to, to take pucks away from opponents and actually get takeaways tracked, uh, you know, on the stat sheet. Pedersen was second on the Canucks and first among forwards on the penalty kill in terms of ice time. So he was involved, and we saw that he brought that power kill element. I mean, he and JT Miller ended up tied for the league lead in shorthanded goals and shorthanded points. So, again, Pedersen shows signs of being a, a really good penalty killer. But he was on a team that was 
dead last. And so, uh, you know, it just wasn't going to happen for him. And then when you look at uh, goal differential and even strength, the Canucks as a team were outscored by 23 this year, five on five. With Pedersen on the ice, the Canucks outscored opponents by 12. So it gives you a sense of, you know, when he was out there, the ice was tilted in the right direction, but still outscoring opponents by 12 at evens compared to Heischer, who was, you know, by 22, and Marner was more than that. And again, Bergeron, 18 five-on-five goals all season long. So, you know, not a knock on Elias Pedersen, not a slight. I think he's trending in the right directions. He does a lot of things uh, that you would want from a Selkie candidate and a Selkie finalist. And I also think it's important to note, like, this is one of those awards, and I think back to Ryan Kessler, like, there's a progression involved. I think you have to get some votes, and then you get notoriety, and maybe people around the league take note, like, oh, okay, for next year, like, I should be watching. You know, Pedersen's kind of creeping up there. And then maybe you work your way to being a finalist. And then ultimately, if you continue to progress in the right direction, at some point, maybe you become a Selkie winner. But uh, like all these awards, I mean, you're dealing with the best of the best of the National Hockey League. There's no shame if Elias Pettersson is one of the top 10 defensive forwards in the NHL. That's pretty damn good. It's just that he is not one of the three best defensive forwards in the NHL this season. So yeah, no snub, no slight, no issues. Game on. Carry on.